Now, just as men pave their own paths to greatness, so do women. Joanne Paul is the former chief financial officer at Standard Chartered Bank, and she now holds the seat at Telashore Investment Holdings. Timothy Maurice Webster takes us into her C-suite and finds out just what enabled her journey to the top. What a journey, I mean, your journey, I mean, you studied overseas, you've been around the world, and you've had a fascinating background from banking to this sort of investment holding space where you guys do all types of stuff. I actually had no idea until researching this that the Telashore, uh, part of your group was a Saxon. Yes. Do you spoil yourself there? <laughs> Every now and again, definitely for date night, I won't okay. argue. So, and what was so impressive is the Saxon team still remember the first time my husband and I went for date night, where we sat, what we ate. Really? Um, now, now that's impressive. So it's very impressive. And it's, you're lucky it's my first 100 days, actually. Oh, so that magical number. Um, and I think I'm really fortunate that Telisha has lived up to my expectations and the reality. So people said, oh, you're still in your honeymoon phase. But the passion, the environment, so the warmth when you come in, the innovation, the assets, so the basket sure. of goods, have actually been exactly what I expected is yeah. almost what I got. And so I'm really fortunate. And insurance, I've loved banking in the financial services sector, and I know it can make a difference. But insurance is truly noble. And so the privilege that I've had here is I've been able to better explain to my children all four of them, the awesome force and what I do. Oh, wow. um, and I said to them, it's, it's about putting people's lives back together. Yeah. And in a tough or tra tragic moment or in an incident you weren't expecting, how to get them to survive through it. So then I know what mom does in her day sure, job, sure, which sure. is great. Um, but it is, it's, a, it's an interesting and intriguing basket of goods. Um, the environment is superb and the passion that the people have for finding a better way has been absolutely consistent. So every now and again, I push the button and I think I'm going to call the call center and see what they really react yeah. like. Um, it's Got been it. fun. I won't, I won't say that it hasn't been without its exciting moments, but sure. it's definitely been fun. Now, as a CFO, there's a lot of weight on your shoulder. Take us back. What are some of the things in your sort of early development that helped sort of prepare you to be a financial officer? So, a couple of things. One. You need your technical cred. You really have to have earned some of your stripes. So work hard, and hard work does pay off, but understand and be genuinely interested in the industry and in the numbers. So in my career, I spent time in finance, I spent time in HR. HR was probably my toughest two years around yeah. the real people investment and the, the amount of time you spend that is just about engagement. But it helped me work out who I was, okay. what was important to me, what made me tick, what ticked me off, yeah. <laughs> um, where I ticked off other people, um, and that I really wanted to be in the finance space and balance the technical pieces around making an impact in the business with the business acumen with the people side. So I think in my career, branching out out of what would have been a normal trajectory was really powerful. It, it helped me find the better authentic me. Yeah, I see. Um, and I think that was a big win. Okay. I also worked for someone once that told me, do you have a pink slip? And I remember saying, like, is that like a Dear John letter? No, not really. And she, he said, no. Like, it's a bit like suffering from strategic seduction. If I decide I want to go and buy a couch that's a leather two-seater and I get in and the sales rep is amazing and I leave with a purple futon, you know, like, did I take my pink slip out of the till and say that's what I wanted to do? And it was a very powerful lesson learned in terms of working with someone that said, do you know what you want to get out of your next step, your next job, your next career? Um, and with that, he said, the biggest question you need to ask yourself as you move up the corporate ladder is not, yes, who you will work for, but would your peer group work for you, not mm -hmm. just with you? And it's quite um, sobering when you work out, some people would and others wouldn't. So, so how do you take people with you? Yeah. And I think the movement from survivor and being, you know, thriving on your own to actually doing it as a team have probably been really good life lessons. Yeah. Now, you, you grew up um, in, you grew up in South Africa, yeah. and uh, as a kid, I mean, I mean, imagine you're small, petite. Were you uh, like a pack of dynamite? Were you like a fiery type of personality? What were you like as a kid? So I think um, my dad is Zambian, my mom is Spanish, and there's some Lebanese. So, but a really feisty combination if you yeah, think about exactly. the makeup. Um, and I remember my father was very grounded and, and I was an absolute A-type personality, very driven, wanted to be the most successful. And he'd say to me, who did you play with today? What did you learn? And I'm like going, 
you know, you didn't ask me what my marks were, where I got. And I think, you know, his garden is around rewarding you for learning something different, meeting someone new. Mm. Who else did you work, you know, meet at school? Or who did, did you play with that one child that's always by themselves? And so he was a bit of a disruptive um, parent from that perspective around I wasn't just validated for doing well. So growing up, I was really recognized for making a difference, taking people with me, about experience, telling stories. And I really probably only truly appreciated that when I started to lead a team, and actually when I had my own children around the roundedness, that not one thing makes you successful. So that informed my makeup um, quite a bit. And I was definitely a nerd, but I think to the point that you sometimes suffer fatigue, and um, you know, having someone ground you and bring you back to you, you need to be all around, play some sport, you know, do things that would take you out your comfort zone. And so I was very fortunate to have that kind of um, push in my early life. And I came from the small town, so I always wanted to be in the big city. And people said to you, dynamite comes in small packets. And my, my mom would say, so does jelly, so does jelly. <laughs> so like, you know, just a bit of a, you know, wake up and smile yeah, the yeah, roses. Yeah. There's always someone smarter, sure, foster. Sure. And other people that don't have what you've got. So how do you look around and take people with you? And they were very much around, take people with you. Um, and that ideally you want to leave your thumbprint so someone will feel you in the room, but it's not you. Like everyone's success is their own. Um, so it was very interesting because some of those things I think I only said thank you for when I was a grown adult with my own kids and you realize, wow, actually those were life lessons that made me better. Sure. Um, and I did, I, I mean, I, I love the technical stuff. I enjoy the reading and that I've taken with me in terms of my whole career is be interested in what you're doing. Curious. Be curious, want to understand what's happening in the industry and in the environment. Get excited about adverts that your peers are putting out there or what your competitors are doing. Research the innovation, take time to collect and connect the dots. And I think that curiosity is so important in terms of keeping you going because you're gonna work for a long time. I also sure, worked sure. that out as I got older. Like, <laughs> like I'm not retiring at 40 because I'd be retired to this sure. year. So tell us about your, in terms of staying on top of your game and staying mentally sharp. Uh, we were chatting off camera about shifting the green tea to keep your mind sharp, uh, health wise. With all the pressure that you face in a brand this big with numbers, the incredible number that this holdings group has. What are some of the things that you do to keep yourself on top of your game? It's interesting that you ask that because someone said to me, I do a really um, a firm sponsor of the Triple B EPs of, of transformation and diversity and take people with you. And actually over time develop my own Triple B E code. Okay. okay. So it covers three things. Be prepared. So the ability for me to not be overwhelmed comes from being extra prepared. So I like to, and the, the internet's great, you can Google who you're in the meeting with, you can understand the counterparts, you can do more research. On the day, generally regulation, legislation, and you know, social media give you information about what's changed and what's happening. So that's helped me manage being overwhelmed. So how do I do that? Um, that's the first B. The second one is be focused. So I think one of the things I was, when I was first started out, was very good at getting through a lot. And I think initially in my early career, busy and success were probably the same word, yeah. okay, which, is not, <laughs> exactly. which is not the case. And I think, yeah. and so learning to focus on what matters most has been a skill I've worked very hard on. If I have 20 things to do today, how do I narrow it down to five? And like any good, you know, good good hard bee, you know, honey bee worker, I'd, I'd start with five things I've already done and took those sure. off. Yeah. But now it's about taking the 20 to the five to the one. You know, do the thing that matters most, and that's almost discipline. I've had to really work out what that looks like. Because otherwise you just get completely overwhelmed. It's too much. It's just too much. And your default position, because 40% of what you do really is habit, is to do the stuff you know. And that's not going to make the difference. Um, the other one was to be agile. So not be defensive about someone that challenges how you operate. Be the platform that allows someone to put their hand up and say, what about this? And I find the most amazing gems from some of the most junior staff that just go, well, why would you do that? You know, and you sort of stop asking why, because you've got a proven approach, you've got a methodology, sure. you've seen it work. Um, so, so, it was, so for those things for me were key around settling myself. So be prepared, you know, be focused, and make sure that you, you can be agile. And then the E's are different. The first one is about escape. And I know it sounds <laughs> odd, it's like, but what, I, I almost need to take myself out of a work environment to think. Because if I have no free space, I can't recalibrate. So I'm just going so much that I'm like doing some iterative tweaks to some ideas, but genuinely escape. And so I started motorbike riding. 
partly because I had to concentrate so hard on just riding that I couldn't think about work per se, but it helped me rebalance. What kind of bike is it? Harley, a sports team at 1800 and very cool. Wow. Um, and I have three sons and a daughter, yeah. so you either join them or you like, yeah, yeah. on the sideline. <laughs> um, so I learned to ride and that escape piece, it was, it was like refueling my batteries. So if you can make the time to escape. Sure. escape. And the other, and the last one was, was excellence. Like whatever you do, do it really well. And in that excellence, celebrate the many milestones. We always like celebrate the big targets. But actually every day, if you got what you want out of that meeting, for that particular meeting, actually well done. Because it's hard to keep going. And you know, we all suffer from imposter syndrome at some stage or from fatigue. You don't want to go, oh, what did I do today? And so those mini milestones and being excited, I think, have been, for me, really key to I love keep your going. BB. So there's my triple B eco <laughs> to keep going. I score myself. Yeah.